prayer. And he put his strong arm around my shoulders. This is right out here in Circle Drive. He smelled of soap and flannel. And he prayed for me. And he prayed for all of us gathering here at Trinity in these Easter services. He prayed for us gathering here today. And then with the smallest of prompts, he gave me a story. A short one. He said that when his boy was nine years old, he and his son met someone, and in the course of conversation, this someone complimented Nicholas for his clothing. And Nicholas said, oh, these old things. The way we do. And then went on their way. And after his boy and he were alone again, his son said to him, Dad, I just say thank you. We can go through life putting up with things, wishing we were elsewhere, distracted, perhaps waiting for the moment that we can go put on some real pants. And such moments will always come. We have things to do, and people show up and ask of, of things of us at unwanted times. They show up earlier than expected on our doorstep, or they call us during dinner, and it is natural and it is okay that we aren't always able to put aside everything for that person in that moment. But if we aren't also listening for the voice that tells us there is something more here, if we aren't sensitive to the tug of the divine life calling us to go after the one who has just left us, we can miss that moment of encounter. You see, Mary encountered the risen Christ because she had followed her heart to where the body of her Savior lay. Nicholas, this beautiful, nearly elderly man, soft-spoken and still strong, could have reacted to his nine-year-old, who in effect, after all, was telling him what he should have said. He could have reacted by taking offense, but instead he was open to the wisdom his son had to teach. His son, without saying so much, had given him a lesson in the dignity of receiving gift with simple thanks. No explanation needed, no protest of not being worthy, just thank you. Nicholas was able to receive that because he was listening, because he is a man grounded in God, because he has one ear open to that voice. He is sensitive to that hold. And isn't it interesting that he knew somehow that I needed to hear that word from him, that that was the story he gave to me. The real meaning of Easter is just too big to put our words around in any kind of totality. We can only answer that question with our lives over a lifetime and even beyond. But the first moment of Easter is an awakening to the deep currents of life that give meaning and purpose.